So today we're going to be doing question number five from the 2006 AP Calculus Test. And this question says, consider the differential equation dy over dx equals 1 plus y all over x, where x is not equal to zero. So on part A, which we're going to be working on, it says, on the axis provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the eight points indicated. So we have our slope field here on our piece of paper. And I went ahead and I wrote each um, point indicated on the field in this chart. And we're going to go ahead and find the slope by plugging in the x and the y coordinates into the differential equation that they gave to us. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can graph our slopes. So <clears throat> when you have negative 2 for x and 0 for y, we have a slope of negative 1 half negative 1 for x and 1 for y, we have a slope of negative 2. Negative 1 for x and 0 for y, we have a slope of negative 1. Negative 1 for x and negative 1 for y, we have a slope of 0. For 1 for x and 1 for y, we have a slope of 2. 1 for x and 0 for y, we have a slope of 1. 1 for x and negative 1 for y, we have a slope of 0 and 2 for x and 0 for y, we have a slope of 1 half. So now that we have all of our slope figu slopes figured out, we can go ahead and plot them on the given <coughs> axis. So for this point, we know the slope is negative 1 half, so it's not going to be very steep at all, and it's going to be in the negative direction. So that is close. And for this negative 1, 1, this point right here, we know that the slope is negative 2, so that's a pretty steep slope. We'll exaggerate it for the sake of this problem because they will be looking at if we um, drew relative steepness and in the right direction of our slopes. So the next point, negative 1, 0, has a slope of negative 1, so it's somewhere in between the slope of these two. So that should be somewhere in between. And for negative 1, negative 1, our slope is 0. So just a horizontal line. OK, so on to the point 1, 1, our slope is 2. 1, 0, our slope is 1. And 1, negative 1, our slope is again 0, so a horizontal line. And then for our last point, 2, 0, our slope is 1 half. So again, that's a very shallow slope. And that's how you do part A. So that's pretty easy. Just be sure to um, include the relative steepness of the slope because they will be looking for that when they're grading your test. So on to part B of this question. It says, find the particular solution y equals f of x for the differential equation with the initial conditions f of negative 1 is equal to 1 and state its domain. So <clears throat> we know that with the initial condition f of negative 1 equals 1, that that is at the point negative 1, 1. So we're going to need that later on once we are plugging in our numbers to find the particular solution. And when we look at this problem, we know that it's asking us to integrate the given equation, so we need to find the original function because it says find the particular solution y equals f of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So our differential equation is dy over dx is equal to 1 plus y all over x. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get everything with y's on the left side and everything with x's on the right side. So we'll divide by 1 plus y to get that onto this side. So dy 1 plus y. And then to get dx onto this side, we will multiply by dx. So we have 1 over x dx. So this is essentially what we're doing if we're going to write it out in the steps. We're dividing by um, 1 plus y, which is the same as multiplying by 1 over 1 plus y. And we're multiplying by dx, and we need to do it to both sides. So when we multiply, 
those cancel out, and when we divide, those cancel out, leaving us with this function. So we need to f integrate these, and we know when you have 1 over um, a function like this, 1 over 1 plus y, that we need to take the natural log, and that's the um, antiderivative of this. So ln of the absolute value of 1 plus y will be equal to, and that's the same thing for 1 over x, you're going to take the natural log of 1, or <laughs> the natural log of the absolute value of x, and then we also need to add c, which is a constant, because this is on the dx side, which we always do when you're taking the antiderivative and finding the particular solution, you have to add c on the side with the x. So, now that we have these, we need to get rid of the natural log, because that's not very tidy, and isn't really helping us find the particular solution. So to get rid of ln, we raise it to the e power, and we know that e to the ln of the absolute value of 1 plus y ends up just being 1 plus y, because these cancel out. And we'll work with this other side later. So, using the property of log, we know that to we can split up this e to the ln of the absolute value of x plus c into e to the ln of the absolute value of x times e to the c. And since e to the c is going to be a constant, we can actually just replace this whole term here with a constant, which we're going to call k. So e to the ln of the absolute value of x times k is equal to 1 plus y. So at this point, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more because we know that e to the ln of something, you can just cancel out e as well as the ln and bring what is up here down. So 1 plus y is going to be equal to k times x. And at that point, we could get rid of the absolute value symbol because we are finding the particular solution. And we'll get back to that when um, finding the domain. That is an indication of the domain. So um, let's go ahead and plug in our coordinates, which we have up here, and find the value of k. So 1 plus 1 is equal to negative 1 times k. So 2 is equal to negative k. So negative 2 equals k. So our particular solution is going to be 1 plus y is equal to negative 2x. And we can move 1 to the other side by subtracting. So negative 2x minus 1. OK, so to find the domain, we know that it is x is less than 0 because on the initial condition that they gave us, which is f of negative 1 is equal to 1, the x value is less than 0. So that's how we know that it's x is less than 0. Because we basically have two choices. It could be x is less than 0 or x is greater than 0. And since the x value given is less than 0, we can conclude that the domain is x is less than 0. So this is our final answer. Uh, part B to the 2006 AP Calculus test question number five.